Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a daily, weekly, and monthly backup of a directory on your Linux operating system. Now, specifically for me in this video, I'm gonna be backing up my WordPress website directory, uh, but like I said, this could be any directory on your server. We're gonna be writing a script that utilizes the rsync command, the tar command, and the find command, and we're gonna call that script with a cron job. So let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. Okay, so I'm logged in to two servers here via SSH. This one on the left is the source server. So in here, we're going to be backing up my WordPress website, like I said, at var www.html. And then over here, we are having the destination server. And there's there's really not much going on here. Um, but first, I guess the, the way that I wanna set this whole video up is to go over the individual commands that I mentioned and give you a fundamental understanding of how they work. And then we'll write them into a script, um, like I said, and then we'll call that with the cron job, which automates this whole process and is something really good because you never have to worry about um, dealing with your backups. The cron job will take care of that for you. Okay, so let's start out with the tar commands because the tar command basically creates an archive file of this directory and all of its contents. So um, if we just test it out here on the command line, we can type tar dash Z C F. And these are just three flags. Um, I think it's gzip compress into a file. And then the file that we want to create, we'll just call it for now backup dot tar dot gz. And um, I'm going to, I'm gonna go right into telling you about this dash capital C flag, which is basically, we're gonna change the directory to var www. Okay, so it's the capital C is change directory into this directory. And then what we want to um, contain in the archive is the HTML directory. So when we go ahead and execute that, that's going to take all these files and put it into a file called backup.tar.gz. Now, if in the future, for example, if we ever want to utilize this backup, we would execute the tar command again, but this time with um, the X command or the X flag for extract and XZVF, this V is verbose. Um, and then we're gonna give it the name of the file that we want to extract. So that's backup.tar.gz. And that's gonna extract all of those files into this current directory and then we'll see the HTML directory. And if we go into that directory, we will see all of our website files in here. Okay, so that's basically how the um, tar command works. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of all these files because that was just like a, a, a quick demonstration here. Um, but what we wanna do, because we're gonna be executing this command on a daily basis, we wanna give each backup file a unique name. So we wanna end up here with a daily backup where each backup has a timestamp in the file name of what day it was backed up. Okay, so in order to do that, we can use the date command uh, to give that file name a specific date. So let's try that again. Instead of, I'll just use the up arrow key here to go back to that previous command. Instead of calling our backup, simply backup.tar.gz, we can say backup dash and then we'll give it a dollar sign in two um, parentheses. So this is basically just gonna execute a command between these two parentheses. And we're gonna execute the date command. Um, and this this might get a little confusing for you, but if you need to copy and paste these um, verbatim, I'll have them linked down below in the description. But this is just the format of the, the, the string that we're working with. So um, percent Y for the year, percent M for the month and percent D for the day. So that's gonna get the current day in the format of year, month, day. So if we execute that, this time it'll create the same file, but the file name will be backup-2021. It's 2021 now. <laughs> um, 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 2021, 01 for January and 23 for the 23rd of January. Okay, so that looks good. Um, let's remove that again because we're we're just going through the, the motions here. Um, the only other thing that I want to say here is that it's probably a good idea to make it a little bit organized. So let's make a folder here called backups. And then in the backups directory, we will make another folder in here called daily 
and then we'll make another folder in here called weekly and then we'll make another folder in here called monthly so again the goal here is to have a series of daily backups maybe going back maybe a week or so um, a series of weekly backups you can pick a number maybe 10 weeks we'll go back and a series of monthly backups so at most we'll keep maybe a year's worth 12 monthly backups so the reason we want to do this is because we don't actually want um, to keep like 365 days worth of backups. We don't want 365 daily backups. We only care really about the seven most recent and that's configurable. You can change that to whatever you want, um, but that's the way I like to set it up for myself. So anyway, let's modify our command just slightly so that our daily backup ends in the daily directory. So we'll hit the up arrow key to go back up there and we will do instead of this we'll just add to the beginning of the path here and i'm going to use this tilde character to reference the the home directory um, slash backup slash daily okay so now when we execute that command our backup file instead of ending up in the current directory it's not in there it'll end up in the backups daily directory Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, let's, let me show you next this command. Uh, it's the find command, you might be familiar with it. So the find command allows you to find, typically in a use case, find files uh, given a name or a certain pattern. But what we wanna use the find command is to delete older versions of files that we don't care about. So like I was saying, we only wanna keep, in this case, at most seven daily backups. So with the find command, you could do something like this. So let's find inside the backups directory, inside the daily directory, any file that has been created and has been created is the dash M time command over seven days before today. That's the plus seven. And then what we wanna do with those files is delete them. So if we execute this now, we don't have any uh, files in that directory that are older than seven days. So nothing actually happens. But I just wanna prove that this works because um, this, if, if we change this plus seven to minus seven, that just means that any files newer than seven days, if that makes sense. So like what it's gonna do is look out seven days from now and anything that's been created before seven days is gonna get deleted. So what this is actually gonna do is delete that file because it was created today. So if we execute that and we do an LS of the backups daily directory, that file is gone. So I don't have any, um, I don't have files older than seven days to prove this to you, but just, I guess, take my word for it that this will delete files that have been uh, created over seven days ago. And that way we will only have at most seven daily backups in this directory. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. And then uh, actually what, yeah, we'll keep that in mind. So we did the tar command to create the archive. We're gonna delete old versions of uh, the daily backups that are greater than seven days old with the find command. And then the next thing to do is to pretty much copy everything in the daily directory over to from this source server off off of the server to the destination server here and we can do that with the rsync command so um, let me make one more backup here just so we have something to work with and so we have our backup in here and now let's let's play around with the rsync command so um, we can type in rsync dash a for archive and then similarly dash dash delete is going to get rid of if, if, if this file has been deleted in the source, it'll also be deleted in the destination. So eight days from now, when this file is deleted from the source, it'll also get deleted from the destination. So what that does is actually makes a mirror image between your source server and your destination server. They'll, they'll be exactly the same all the time. Okay, so rsync dash a dash dash delete. Um, what are we backing up? We're backing up, um, I'm gonna give it the full path here. From the root directory, we're gonna back up the entire backups folder. So all of our daily backups, all of our weekly backups, all of our monthly backups, everything under there. And that is our source. And then the destination is this server. So um, our sync allows you to log in to that server. So we're gonna give it the username of this server over here at this IP address you can see up here. So 
and then you type colon and then the relative path to where you want that to end up on the destination server. So I'm going to use the tilde again, which references the home directory on the, the destination server. So slash backups. Now, before we execute this, we want to make sure that the backups folder exists on this side. So let's go over here and make the backups folder. Okay, so now we have a backups folder and obviously this is empty by now, right now. Uh, but when we execute this command and give it our credentials, we will see those files transfer over. So let's go ahead and do that. So hit enter and it's asking us for the password for this and I'm gonna copy, it's asking us specifically for the password for the destination server. So I'm gonna copy and paste that here. You won't see anything show up on the, the screen, but I'm gonna hit enter and that's gonna do its thing. Now, over here on the destination server, let's verify that it actually happened. We can do LS backups again, and we'll see that we have our daily, monthly, and weekly folder. And if you look in the daily folder, we will see that we have our backup file in here. So really good. That's that's uh, basically the gist of what we're trying to do here. Uh, at this point, we can, there's one more thing we wanna do. We, we'd, we can't, because this is an automated process, we can't be typing our password in every time. So there's a way that we can, um, pretty much allow for a passwordless login to this remote server every time. And we can do that with our SSH key. So it, I have other videos on this topic, so I'll just go through it briefly. But what we're gonna do is basically, um, look, if you don't in your .ssh, in your home directory, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a directory in here called .ssh. And in here, if you don't have an ID RSA, and idrsa.pub file, which is your your private key and your public key for um, SSH. You'll have to create one, and you can do that with um, SSH. You can do that with SSH dash keygen uh, dash t for type RSA, and then just go through the process of um, generating that, and that'll give you the idrsa uh, private key and public key. But anyway, since I have that, I don't have to do that. What we're gonna do specifically is look at the my SSH IDR say my public key. Okay. And all we have to do is copy the contents of my public key. Okay, we'll get out of there and come over here to the destination server. And inside that same directory, inside the SSH directory, you should have a everybody, I'm pretty sure, should have a file in here called authorized keys. And we're gonna put the public key of the source server in the authorized key file on the destination server. So that way, when this destination server is presented with the public key of the source server, it's gonna be like, oh, I already know who you are, so I don't need your password. You're allowed to log in. So let's test that out. Let's see if we can rsync this file back over here without typing a password. And this, this is not necessary at all, but I'm gonna go into the backups directory and just remove the, the daily folder um, just so we can see something happening here. But we're, we're actually gonna be looking for two things. We're gonna be looking for the fact that this is not gonna ask us for a password and the fact that it actually copies over. So let's go ahead and execute this command. It doesn't ask us for a password because we set up the, the keying. And then we can ls over here to see what's in here. We got the daily directory and inside the daily directory we have that backup file. Cool, so let's put it in the script. Let's make a script called backup, oops, backup.sh. And what we're basically gonna do is take everything that we just wrote and put it into a script. So um, we have our tar command. We're gonna take uh, the timestamped file. We're gonna make a timestamp file. Oops, we're gonna make a timestamp file um, for today with the contents of the HTML directory at var www. We're gonna delete anything that's more than seven days old. And then we're gonna take, we're gonna call the rsync command and back up everything from the backup directory on this server to the backup directory on the destination server. And that's about it. So um, let's, again, just for the sake of demonstration, let's, let's remove everything in this backups directory on the destination server. There's nothing in here right now, uh, but if we call the backup, the backup script that we just wrote, it will execute all of those commands in sequence that we just created. So it should create another tar file. Um, and actually we should 
remove this backups directory too. Okay, so, um, oh no, that was, that was silly. We need to keep that backups directory, so let's make that again because it needs to exist for it to show up. And so make directory backups and then inside backups, let's make a daily, make a weekly, and make a mo uh, monthly. Okay, sorry about that. So I just want to I just want to start from like a clean slate so we know um, we see this happening. So let's go ahead and call that script sh for the shell um, and then backup.sh. Okay, so let's execute that and it's something went wrong. It's backup. Oh, I right I. This isn't plural, this is a singular. So let me um, let me modify the script. It's always hard to do these videos live because um, you always you always screw something up. So it's backups with an S and backups with an S and backups with an S, same thing over here. Okay, so that should work now. Let's try to execute that script one more time and we don't see any output that looks good. It's it's doing its thing. So let's check on the source in the backups directory. Um, in the daily directory, we have created that file. And then in the destination directory, we have daily, monthly, weekly. And then in the daily directory, we have the backup. So that is the general way that this script is gonna work. Obviously you can modify it to your needs, um, change the paths, change the, the timestamps, all that stuff. Uh, but that is the fundamental way about how this works for daily backups. Now, if we wanted to do this for weekly backups, we can make a new script called backup weekly, something like that. And we can do something very similar. So uh, I'll just copy and paste this here. You guys should know at this point what we're doing. So we're gonna into the weekly directory, make another time stamped file and uh, the source is going to be the HTML directory at var www. And then we're going to get rid of anything in the weekly directory with the find command that has been created over 31 days ago. So I, I and again, this is configurable. So, uh, right, yeah, 31 days ago, which would be a month. Um, so that would be kind of what your weekly script would look like. And then let's just do for completeness like a monthly script. And that would look something like this. So again, into the monthly directory, create a time stamped file archive using the tar command of the contents of the var www HTML directory. And then we're gonna get rid of anything in there that's over 365 days old or a year old. So we're gonna keep a year's worth of monthly backups. Okay, and now the final piece to this whole puzzle is to automate this with a cron job. We can do that with uh, typing cron tab dash e to edit. And in here, I might already have something. Yes, I do. So I am calling pretty much what we typed on the command line, um, except I need to add an S here to backups. So we're giving it the full path to our script. So slash root slash backups slash backups. Do I have that path right? Let's see. We have a backup.sh file in the root directory. So now I have that slightly off. So, uh, do, 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 do. so it's just root slash root slash backup.sh. So what we typed on the command line pretty much, we're gonna call this script. And then if you're not familiar with cron jobs, basically this syntax right here is saying every day of the month, you can kind of see it here. Every day of the month, every month of the year, every day of the week at 12 o'clock midnight, or I guess in this case at 12.15 midnight, the hour and the minute, so 0.15. At 12.15 midnight, every single day, we're gonna call this script. So that's gonna generate that daily backup, um, the weekly backup, well, in this case, it's gonna generate the daily backup. Um, but in order to have a, a weekly script, we would do something similar, uh, like, let's say, I don't know, at 12.30, 
um, just once a week we want to do this. So we're going to call the um, the weekly script just once a week. So it's going to be star, star, and then the day of the week. Um, it's just like Mondays, one, Tuesdays, two, something like that. So uh, just on, let's say Monday is number one here. And then we're going to call root and then backup dash weekly. And then finally for the monthly backup, we'll say maybe at like uh, 1245 AM, uh, the day of the month, let's say the first of the month we'll back up and we'll call the root backup monthly script. M-O-N-T-H dash, okay. So, um, and I might have spelled that wrong back here. Monthly backup weekly M O N T. No, I got it right. Okay, so basically, yeah, let's review this. So we have three different cron jobs. This one's going to call on a daily basis at 12:15 a.m. the backup.sh script. This one is going to call the first day of the week, which it could I could be wrong, but let's just say it's Monday at 12:30 in the morning. Uh, the backup weekly script, and then backup monthly script is going to be called the first day of the month at 12.45 a.m. and that's gonna execute. And that's it, that's really how uh, how easy it is to create a custom backup solution for whatever directory you want on your Linux operating system. Um, by this point, you should know how to use the tar command, the find command, and the rsync command and how to do that passwordless login. If you have any questions about any of this, including the cron jobs, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. And, and I do have a, a blog post, like I said, with all of these commands in it. So um, also check that out as well. If you got any value out of this video, definitely consider subscribing to this channel for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.